What's up guys, welcome to episode 11 of Private Lesson. This week's episode, working with Daniel, who I've worked with a bunch in the past. Daniel just recently got homeschooled um, for the sake of really giving this thing a go for a couple years. So, gonna be working with him quite a bit. I'm sure we'll have a lot of videos of Daniel. This is one of the longer private lesson episodes, 25 minutes or so. Not sure why it ended up being such a long video. Maybe I was just being lazy with my editing. Either way, lots of information in here. So definitely try to watch through the whole thing as all of these, yeah, cover a lot of similar things, but every situation is different and you can learn from, from each situation that these guys are in. Just a real quick thank you to all my subscribers just at 15,000, should be at 20 in no time. So make sure if you haven't already, before you watch this video, just hit the subscribe button below. And after the video is over with guys, uh, feel free to comment, ask questions, and within the first hour or two of posting this video, I'm definitely gonna try to answer everybody's questions. So um, yeah, comment below, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And, and one more thing, click the link below if you wanna get the February edition limited t-shirt. Um, definitely have some sizes left. They We've sold quite a bit, but I know for sure we have uh, pretty much every size, size left available. So get these things, super soft, super comfortable, and uh, will only be for sale in February. So thanks guys, enjoy. Today we're out here at Tomahawk MX with Daniel. Daniel is somebody that I've worked with um, for a couple of years now, I think. Um, we've been on and off quite a bit. He's been fairly consistent with my whole program. He actually just got homeschooled. Just got a smart trainer in Zwift for the bicycle, so we're gonna train online via the smart trainer and that program, so we can kind of stay in touch through that. I'm just gonna pick his brain a little bit today and see kind of ultimately what his goals are for the next year or two. I think his plan is to be homeschooled for this next year or two at least and just give this thing a full effort, which I think it's smart. He's he's a ninth grade, super, super smart kid. Um, I'm, I'm only assuming he did really well in school or else his parents wouldn't have let him pursue this. Essentially the same situation I was in. I got homeschooled after ninth grade and the only way my parents let me do it was if I had you know straight A's, maybe a B here or there, but if I got a C, it was end of the world. So school came first, um, but it, eventually it got to the point where, you know, especially in high school, it felt like I was being held back and it was almost as if it were a waste of time. Socially, I was getting that engagement at the races with all my racing buddies. So it wasn't like I was, I was missing out on the social aspect of it. And I think Daniel will be able to be in the same boat here and he'll be smart enough to know after a year or two, if this is something worth pursuing further or if it's something he just wants to do for fun. I think that's pretty cool. Right now we're just getting two base lap times on him in the morning. We have the track all to ourselves. Wow, consistent. Okay, so he just ran a 249.5 and a 249.9. So within four tenths of a second on almost a three minute long track. That's pretty good. Track is super smooth. Um, it's like 45 degrees out. We've had a lot of rain recently, but it's somehow Wish I had my bike, it looks unreal. We're gonna work this finish line table. This is a tight right-hander into, it's not a very big tabletop, but it's a little bit tricky because you are kind of turning up the face of it. I thought this was something him and I have worked a lot, but apparently I've worked it with just all my other riders and not Daniel. So Daniel told me this morning that he's crashed twice on this recently. Oh. So as you can imagine, his confidence is in the crapper a little bit. So we're gonna try to just get him some confidence built on this. Just make our way around the track. He's gonna be on a full-time program with me so that we're not gonna to rush to try to teach him a million things today. Um, we're really just gonna to try to build on that base lap time, build some confidence and this is the off season. So we got time. The best place to hit this thing right now is on the far, far right. It's got the best takeoff. It's got the biggest lip and then the landing is actually smooth. Um, <laughs> If you, I don't know if you noticed doing your warm up laps, but anywhere in the middle and then middle left, it's like two big rollers. Yeah, I saw that, yeah. If you get to the downside, it's not going to affect you too much because you can you can absorb them just All fine. Right. But if you find yourself in a bouncing situation and now you have rollers to deal with, mm -hmm. it can get a little hairy. The biggest thing with this jump, and I, I've, I've posted YouTube videos working with Talon and I think even working with James, a couple other guys on this exact jump, you have to get as straight as possible. Mm -hmm. Even if you find yourself carving going up the bottom of the face really try to do whatever you can to get the middle of your tires on the ground when you're taking off i don't think you're at the level yet to be you know the situations in supercross and outdoors and where top guys are 
hitting jumps, like still turning out mm -hmm. of the turn. But a lot can go wrong. Right. You know what I mean? Like even if you have smooth throttle control, you never know when those tires are going to break loose or when you're going to catch an edge and catch traction and send right. you the other way. Yeah. Which happens to a lot of guys' office. You'll see they'll be like, oh, I'm sliding, I'm sliding. Ooh. And next thing you know, they're getting kicked the opposite way. Right. If you can just get the, the flat part or the top part of your tires as vertical as possible, the, the safer it's going to be. So we're working with a 90 degree right. There's a roller on the inside. The outside, there's no roller. Takeoff's pretty mellow. So I think this is what people struggle with here is you don't get crazy amount of pop. This is a tabletop, but it's kind of starting to turn into a little bit of a double. So you just have to keep in mind that it does have a pretty good bounce zone, which this is where it gets people in trouble. So they land here and they end up bouncing down the landing. And you can see what it's causing is almost another roller halfway down. So I told him the best part of the takeoff is on the right, rider's right. Best part of the landing, rider's right. Look how much better that looks than that. Biggest mistake riders make when they're nervous about hitting a jump is coming up and kind of half-assing it and then making that last second commitment to go for it. You need to commit way early on that you're gonna do something. And I've, I know I've said this in a million videos, but just simply continue that commitment. Rail the turn with 100% speed and effort. And if you hit that turn perfect, Great, the hard part's done. Now we just continue that speed off the jump. If you mess the turn up, okay, now we make the decision in our head. Okay, maybe this, this isn't the lap to do it. What you don't wanna do is take the turn slow and cautious. And you know what? I do the same thing. I found myself doing it this weekend. Um, this is a perfect way to relate it. After the two whoop sections, you had that sand turn and then you had the triple out of the sand. I was so nervous about trying to get the sand right to get the triple that I was messing the sand up because I was being cautious. The laps that I did it good. You can tell he's nervous. The laps that I got it right and actually went triple double like I was supposed to were the laps that I just said, screw it, I'm just gonna hit the sand with some aggression and then worry about the triple later. And as silly as that sounds, those were the laps that I killed the sand and then I came out and the triple was just simply continuing that commitment and that speed and that was easy. The times that I went in the sand, I was tiptoeing and like only thinking about the triple were the laps that I botched it and had to go two, three or two, two, one inside, which were both slower options. So you could tell Daniel was like tiptoeing his way into this corner right now because he's so concerned with the jump, which is normal. <laughs> Decent first attempt, but a lot of speed being picked up last second. A lot of his speed and throttle right here the last three feet of the takeoff. I think if you focus more on the turn and said, all right, I'm really gonna hit this thing with some aggression, get on the gas early, build my speed early, the tabletop's gonna come to you and you're just gonna be like, oh, well, that was easy. Okay. You didn't get on the gas until about two feet left on the takeoff. Okay. That's how you slide out. Like, luckily you caught traction, but like, <laughs> I was like this the whole time because you were coming up a little sideways and you went, yeah, last second. That's how you're gonna end up getting that kick back the other way or mm -hmm. breaking the tires loose and doing like a 180 that way. Okay. That, I tell you right now, that is how you'll crash. And that's okay. probably how you did crash before. I'm sure. Can I see this for a second? Yeah. Kids don't ride without a helmet, but <laughs> I think just to build some confidence, just come from off the track here, create a line, just get straight, get comfortable getting on the speed early, committing early and just, getting the feeling in the pit of your stomach of like what it's like to actually clear the jump. Mm -hmm. And then you should be able to program yourself to make that happen from the turn. This bike is plenty fast enough to make it from not only the outside, but the inside and the turn and to get the angle properly. Okay. You're just so hesitant right now because I can tell you're just nervous. That's all. <laughs> come up with some speed and you I didn't like did, could you hear my throttle last second it was yeah like maintaining if not I was decelerating a little bit as I came off the lip because I had the speed that I needed I absorbed it I didn't do anything funny off the takeoff build confidence that way I landed like right in the bounce zone but I have long legs and I was just able to absorb it I landed nice and level mm -hmm. and drop in drop in right into that rut and it gives you a perfect straight angle hit it exactly where I did okay. Right here, right where it's greasy. Okay. Yeah. Slide a little bit. Yeah. Get on the gas as soon as you come up over that bump, bro. Get on the gas back here. 
Your acceleration should be leveled out and maintained by this point. You shouldn't be looking for more speed, more acceleration after this point. Okay. Because that's, that's pretty greasy. I can see it just from here. Fresh. <laughs> I wish I had filmed that one because oh. it, it definitely didn't do justice of it on your helmet. Oh, that's, well, that's that was exactly about exactly what happened when yep. I crashed. Because we're, I don't even know if that was intentional, dude, but your power band kicked in. It was not intentional at all. Three, I could tell, like you were trying to get the speed and then all of a sudden you're like, yeah, It like caught like power band just like. Yeah. So that last one, he, you could tell he was ready and committed to do it, but the bike right here was whoa, 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 whoa. And then it actually hit the power last second when he wasn't ready. Got it hard right here. Nope. This thing still though is that the power like you're not controlling where the bike is creating power it's happening wherever it wants to and that's dangerous for obvious reasons like right. because you're not expecting it if you use the clutch and feather the clutch just a little bit this is something that you pretty much are only you're only using this on two strokes um you can control where that power band's going to kick in so you're cresting this hump I would absorb it with your legs as much as possible so we're not getting a kick on this hump so that we can get the drive to the ground. And as soon as your rear tire hits right here, you should be, just like you're doing a start, feather the clutch out, create that power. You should be like hitting the power band here and then just controlling the power up the face. You're kind of like, whoa, and then, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like last second that thing takes off and you're just like, holy cow. <laughs> Hear what that bike sounds like immediately, right. and it's that same pitch the whole way. It's not unpredictable. It doesn't, it doesn't creep up on me out of nowhere. I'm I'm feathering the clutch just enough to where I can control where that's happening. That's all. Okay. You understand the concept of doing that, yeah. right? And you don't want to abuse it. You're not going through a turn going. Wah, wah, wah. That means you're in the wrong gear. But if you need to feather it just that little bit to assist it, third gear is perfect for that jump. Mm -hmm. And what I do just to be safe, especially because I didn't have gear on, is I am like decelerating as I come up to take off just to be sure that I don't slide out. Like that last time I got all my speed there uh, early and then I came up to take off and I was like nice and chill. That way I knew for a fact nothing crazy was gonna happen. <laughs> biggest thing in this turn especially it's a tight turn do you know what gear you're in normally here Second uh, or third? third and third will carry you around this type of turn just fine i need to go outside so probably second for this yeah okay get a feel for that and that shouldn't take more than one like you come around that first lap uh take a take a stab at it whether it's second or third mm -hmm. and you should know after that one lap all right second gear ran out too quick third gear bog whatever the case may be figure that out fast a couple big things and you know inside elbow up especially until you get a rut formed mm -hmm. and even when you get a rut formed it's super important but you want to stay as centered and consistent as possible this looks like it has really good traction but depending on like where you hit the mulch patches or right. you hit a little greasy spot it could be un unpredictable in certain areas sit up on the front part of the seat don't want you on your grass cap but get sort of up there really weight that outside foot especially when you're doing the sitting down with both feet on the pegs and when you're doing the stand up put that weight into your right leg and when you sit down don't just put that weight into your butt keep that weight in the leg even though and in supercross we do this a lot too where we land triples or we land like the finish this weekend for example you'd hit the finish line jump and you would land and fly across the start so everyone was landing with their foot out and flying around the turn we weren't landing with all of our weight on our butts because that would hurt even right. if you're down sign of the jump you come down from 20, 30 feet in the air and land just straight up on your butt, it's gonna hurt. When you land like that, even though it looks like we're sitting down, we're absorbing all that impact with our outside leg. So like we're easing into the seat. Same thing applies when you're hitting braking bumps and coming into a turn. <clears throat> you're making the, the move quick to the front, but you're taking that absorption with your leg and not just driving into your butt. <laughs> We 
got Daniel doing my four sets here, which we got stand up only. We have, you can sit down for the turn, but both feet stay on the pegs, so slightly different dynamic than just the stand up the whole way. Uh, the third set is one handed drill. And then the fourth set is normal. The so normal is inside foot, up and in, uh, just like you normally would, standing until the last second turn, sitting, just like a normal turn. Um, so these are four sets that I work on all the time, whether I'm on a, just riding the track, working a section, doing figure eight, circle track. Now, he's doing the one-handed drill now. Purpose of the one-handed drill is just, actually a lot of things, it's gonna fix a lot of bad habits. First of all, gear selection is super important because you don't have access to the clutch gripping the bike and working the bike with your legs and not your upper body. Keep it one hand the whole way, don't cheat it. So using your core to where like just then you saw him dip like this, you need to stay tight so that you don't make those big mistakes side to side and that if you do make a mistake, oh, you can keep it tight and stay centered with the motorcycle. Problems begin to happen when our head is dipping and diving side to side. So he's got one more one hand. On the gas early, nice and smooth. Now I do these in that specific order for a reason. Um, you start with a stand up drill because that's a great position to be in to kind of start the day and to just start working a certain section. It gets you standing up in your attack position. Um, it's a little bit easier to navigate the turn until you get comfortable. Um, then you do sitting down with the feet on the pegs. This is a different dynamic because when you sit, you have to lean with the motorcycle. So leaving both feet on the pegs while actually getting the lean angle, not relying on that inside foot dabbing the turn. Then we go to the one hand, just to clean yourself of those bad habits a little bit. And then we go to normal. So that was actually a nice clean pass. Uh, normal after you do those three drills is gonna feel pretty easy. You should have a little bit of additional confidence. Then it's just a matter of hitting the turn with a little bit of aggression, but really trying to get it clean. So that means in, uh, inside foot, nice and high and tight, toe pointed in. If you do dab it, return it to the foot peg immediately. Outside foot should be off of that rear brake or off away from the shift lever. And on the foot peg, nice and tight on the balls of your feet. Inside elbow up, stay center with the bike. Just try to keep it as clean as possible. And then we can add aggression to that. Technique wise, you were good. It's just you, you're hitting it like overly slow for what you're capable of. Okay. I can tell you're coming in like really really relaxed the speed you're carrying through the turn you're i i don't want you like pushing the limit to where you're making a, a ton of mistakes but mm. you should be starting to nudge your comfort zone just a little bit i, I feel like you're kind of riding down here to where you're just, yeah definitely <laughs> i'm guilty of that sometimes too to where you're not really exerting much effort and you know for sure you won't make a mistake mm. start to try to just nudge up your comfort zone okay. just a little bit uh, i think that's going to be the key thing for you now is You've worked enough with me on technique. We're always going to work technique. Mm. That'll never, no matter what level you're at. Um, we just have to build some confidence and put some aggression into that. Yeah. Is all. You're you're exactly like me. Like watching you go around the track, it's like, yeah, he looks good, but is he really trying or is he just kind of out there cruising? All right. Okay. Um, I think that's sort of a good problem to have, but we need to get you to push your comfort zone just a little bit. All right. So reverse three sets. Start standing. Are you good, or do you need a little break? Make up the time where it's easy to make up time. When you drive down the landing at the finish line, drive down it with some authority, like get on the gas hard. When you're going down the back sides of these jumps, when you're going down the long straightaways, especially being on a super mini, you're talking one, two, three seconds per straightaway that you can make up. Hmm. That's a ton of time. Yeah. Where for us, you know, we're talking one, two seconds, maybe a lap. If, if we're lucky, usually we're fighting for tenths around the entire track. Never mind one actual section. All right. All you have to do is, oh, I'm just gonna just stay in the gas a little <laughs> longer here. I mean, All it's right. not like you're having to dive into a corner and push that extra three feet to try to get that extra tenth. You have so much time that you can make up because mm -hmm. you're just chilling around the whole track. All right. <clears throat> so just make that time up where it's easy. You should be able to drop from that 249 under the 240s and be in the 230 range, like okay. right off the bat. I think we'll just make a little game out of it. What we'll do is you have to beat each previous lap time. So if you go out now, 
and you get a 247, great, you're in the clear, but next time you go out, you gotta beat that 247. And if I don't? And if you don't, we'll just give you... Push-ups or something? We'll give you like 30 push-ups each time. All right. So just, we'll make sure there's a pretty good right. percentage. Before we do these sprints, all I want you to do is we're gonna reverse, um, go back normal direction. I just want you to hit this turn normal, but with actual intensity. So the only thing I'll ask is when you do the loop, you can drop right into this tabletop. I want you to charge down the landing hard. And what you're gonna end up doing is finding one of those braking bumps to set your eyes on to use as your marker. Okay, I can stay on the gas until this braking bump. Do that one or two times until that feels easy and comfortable. Okay, now I'm gonna go to the braking bump past that. Just like I always tell you guys to pick those markers and those cues on the track to where your braking points should be, your sitting points should be, mm -hmm. all that stuff. Create a goal, pick that, pick the braking bump that you think is realistic to stop or to let off the gas or to get on the brakes where the case is and just try to go a little bit further before you let mm -hmm. off the gas and get on the brakes. Okay. Do two or three passes like that, get some confidence, get some aggression, and then we'll go right, in, right into these sprints. Okay. Every, every private lesson with a di every different rider is a little bit different. For a rider like Daniel, we've been doing these lessons for long enough now to where I'm not starting from scratch technique wise which is nice we're we're really just cleaning up and polishing little things technique wise um more so for him it's just building that confidence and the aggression level just a little bit there we go Not bad. what becomes most obvious when daniel starts pushing a little bit is you can tell the tracks coming at him a little bit faster for what he's comfortable with because his downshifts and shifting in general gets all out of whack. <clears throat> you need to be very, very precise, especially the faster you're going with your shifting because you have less time to make it happen. That 100 feet, when you're going 10 or 20 miles an hour faster, is going to feel, or it's going to be a lot shorter amount of time, right? So we got to make sure those shifts are on point, consistent every lap so that you can repeat them. <laughs> Dang it, I just missed that last one on camera and that was by far his best one. Charged in hard, actually forced himself to get on the brakes and guess what, he got to this line that I drew and he was, he was able to slow himself down enough to where he wasn't in panic mode. Awesome, I mean, how did those feel? A lot better. <laughs> First couple I'm like, all right, he's still kind of just, Breathing. And then something happened. I didn't even say anything. I just was still standing here doing my thing filming. And the, like the last three or four that you clicked off, you were really hitting hard. Um, did you see the line that I drew when you were out there? No. Oh, you didn't even see that the whole time? Coincidentally, then, as soon as I drew that line is when you were actually forcing the issue and coming in hot. All you were doing was taking advantage of this time here, mm -hmm. charging in, forcing yourself to break. That was the big thing. The first three or four, I'm like, ah, he's still, yeah, he's getting on the gas a little bit, but you were just, you were still going slow enough to where you could just coast into the turn and hit the turn at that speed, mm -hmm. which all that's telling me is that you're not taking advantage of your straightaway speed. Okay. The last couple, if you hadn't hit the brakes, you wouldn't have been able to take the turn, you would have overshot the turn. And that's what we want. All right. And what you did a great job of, I thought you saw the line, but <laughs> I guess you didn't, so that's good. That means you know how to do this right. When you got to that line, your braking was complete. You were slowed down enough so that you could sit and accelerate through the turn, right? It's not like when you started charging this and charging the straightaway and coming in probably six, seven, eight miles an hour faster all day long. Uh -huh. Nothing changed about the turn itself, right? Mm -hmm. No. You were still able to hit that turn 10 out of 10 times super consistent. Right. That's the key. Okay. And what you see from so many kids your age and so many novice and amateur level rider and shoot, even expert and pro level guys, is when they try to go faster here, the corner goes to crap because they blow past their braking zone and where their braking zone should be over with. Just always remember that imaginary line at the beginning of the turn, no matter how fast and how hard we're trying to charge and outride other people mm -hmm. here, we have to be going slow enough here so that we can begin our turn smooth, calm, and collected. Mm -hmm. Not just pulling the clutch in, sliding in, and just like, you know, right. we're gonna get it. That was awesome. If we could just 
take this mentality here and place it in every turn, dude, you'll be golden. Really? Oh yeah. <laughs> and the landing of that to this imaginary line is 250 feet, probably. I don't know, that's a guess. In that 250 feet, from before we just did that drill, the six or seven or eight times mm -hmm. we just ran through that, you improved a second and a half, two seconds. Oh geez, all right. <laughs> easily mm. you didn't break a sweat doing it you didn't mess up the turn because you were slowed by the turn anyways mm. it's just making that time up in an easy spot to do so all right okay now we just take that and we can apply it to other parts of the track you're going to eat up that 249 it's going to you're going to be amazed i think with how quick you right. can go just know i was telling the camera this the faster you go the more precise we have to be with our shifting mm. because you're going faster speeds you're going to overshoot your shifting marks if you don't if you're not on point with that all right Not bad. Dang, that's pretty good. Not bad. Solid. How did it, Come on. How'd it feel? What would you guess? I, just, I like screwed up on that tabletop. Yeah, but, but like, you you charged it hard and you got a kick, but I think it, even though you went sideways, it was still faster right there. What would you guess? 239. Two, actually, yeah. 39. 237. Actually. <laughs> yeah, dude. Think about that, people. Two. And th this is what seven laps later. It's not like, yeah. like I said, it's not GoPro died by the way. Now filming on my phone. Uh, so we went from a two thirty nine, two forty nine, two forty nine yeah. to a what? Two thirty seven. Two thirty seven. It's twelve seconds. Yeah. <laughs> twelve seconds of basically just straightaway time that was being wasted, mm -hmm. um, and you just taking advantage of charging in those little spots. I mean, dude. Beautiful. Because in the turns, I, I didn't see you making any major mistakes. You were nice and smooth through the spots like this, but I could hear the RPM difference in the straightaways and the uphills where before you were like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm like, come on, like downshift, do something. That time you were sticking like your feather in the clutch where you needed to. The bike was in the meat of the power. Good job.